This is Duke University. My name is Sophia, Sophia Durand. I am a sophomore, um, political science and history double major, philosophy minor. For this exhibit, I chose two maps, um, a map of Lucknow from 1858 and a, an atlas from 1761. The map of Lucknow was published in London by Edward Weller. Um, he was a cartographer and an engraver. And the atlas was from Richard Owen Cambridge, um, published in 1761. And I chose a specific map depicting movements, the movements of British and French troops in a city in northern India. I was really interested in these specific maps because I'm interested in military history. Um, and India is a region that I've researched before with the lab. Um, I took a maps class with Professor Stern, and that's where I really began <coughs> studying British imperialism in India. And I decided to really focus on um, the, the interaction between French and the French East India Company and the British East India Company. Um, and how they related or how they interacted with the local population. Um, so I focused a lot on the Sepoy Rebellion of 1857, 1858, um, because that's really a defining moment in the history of India when the local soldiers who used to work with the British um, or the French, who used to work in, ser in the service of European powers, really rebelled for the first time and were tired of the oppression from these European powers and finally began you know, to move towards a more independent movement. Lucknow, in fact, was very significant in the Sepoy Rebellion because that's where um, really the beginning, where there was the beginning of the rebellion, where um, there was a siege, the British commander was killed, um, and that's where the British really, they were tested. Um, it was hard to kind of explain, hard, hard to explain to the British public. Um, what was happening in India and why India was so important, why they were, uh, why they were um, devoting so much time and so much money in India. So by, by really calming the rebellion down, by suppressing the rebels, they were able to show the determination to stay in India. To begin with, I worked a lot with Mary Kate and Katie. Um, we were in our India group together, so um, we each chose two maps to research, or two maps to focus on. They're very committed, very dedicated, and very um, interested in the research that they were doing. So it was really great working with them. Well, I also worked a lot with Beth, who really was the leader in this project. She was that external eye that I needed to really give me advice on my work. I met with librarians who also were very helpful in the research process. They were able to tell me books that I should check out, maps that might help me in my research. They gave me a lot of data databases that I did not know that were really um, crucial in my research and in my research process. Obviously Professor Stern, um, his emails, you know, reminding us of things that we should check out or, you know, giving us advice. He was very helpful as well. Andrew, um, in fact, for our final project, I, was sent, I sent a lot of my drafts to Andrew and he reads them through and gives us a lot of, a, a lot of advice that's really helpful. Produced by Duke University, online at duke.edu.